Hello Nintendo fans, I'm Dylan, and I have compiled a top 10 list of first-party Nintendo series that did not get a new entry during the Switch generation, that I think should make a comeback next gen for the Switch 2, or whatever their next console is called. And one thing that makes doing a list like this fun is seeing how even a franchise like Famicom Detective Club got a new game after all these years, so clearly anything is possible. To set some ground rules, I want to be clear that we're talking about franchises that did not get a new wholly original game on the Switch, so remasters, remakes, ports, etc. do not disqualify you from this list. So some games on this list had some representation on Switch, just not in built-from-the-ground-up titles, while others are franchises that have long been absent in any form. So with that out of the way, let's begin. Number 10, Punch-Out. Punch-Out is pretty iconic, but the franchise hasn't actually had many games. The last game, Punch-Out, released in 2009 on the Wii, as well as a small downloadable prequel called Doc Lewis's Punch-Out later the same year. Punch-Out is a very simple concept, being a boxing game focused on pattern recognition, and I imagine the game's being very streamlined, just focusing on its pure concept, has actually hurt its chances to come back. Punch-Out on the Wii sold around 1.2 million units, which isn't bad, but I'm sure Nintendo would want to aim bigger to bring it back. On the Wii, they had a single-player career mode option, and it begins where you fight through the ranks of the World Video Boxing Association by rising to the minor, major, and world circuits. Once you're the World Championship belt, you then have to defend your title against harder versions of the fighters. So while Punch-Out! on the Wii had a little more content than it did during the old NES and SNES days, it's still a relatively small game when compared to most modern $60 games. So if Nintendo brings it back on Switch 2, I could see adding some sort of adventure mode where you train up Little Mac in a self-contained world doing challenges built off of some of the mechanics of the game. Think something like a probably smaller version of Street Fighter VI's World Tour mode, which has you leveling up in single player and completing a variety of challenges. But that game still offers a traditional arcade mode as well as online play. I think that would be a great new direction for Punch-Out! Meteor single player content, but also adding multiplayer boxing offline and online, where you can play as the full roster of fighters, not just Little Mac. Now, let's move on to number 9, Rhythm Heaven. Rhythm Heaven is an interesting series of rhythm games that relies on you fully picking up on audio cues as the visuals, if anything, control you. But it's those visuals that I think make Rhythm Heaven so memorable, as I would go as far as to say that Rhythm Heaven has as much personality and charisma as any Nintendo franchise. The last entry released in 2015 on the 3DS, Rhythm Heaven Mega Mix, and while it was received very well, even it was a compilation title using 70 old rhythm minigames and just 30 new ones. It did change up the formula a bit though, with a more fully fleshed out story mode, which I think they should continue with. Obviously Rhythm Heaven has always been on handhelds, so if it came to the Switch 2, that would continue its portable legacy, but also have the novelty of being its first time on a home console. I would have expected the series to already appear on Switch, but if it's not going to happen, then I hope it makes it return for next gen. Now, let's move on to number 8, Wario World. Now, let's start by saying I would be down with a new 2D Wario Land game, but I'm specifically saying Wario World because I'd prefer to see them follow in the footsteps of the underrated 3D platform adventure instead. Wario was headache, both in the form of the microgame madness of WarioWare, as well as the 2D platformers Wario Land. But I think it's time for him to start on a 3D adventure once again. Wario World was part 3D platformer, but it differentiated itself from something like Mario by being a bit more combat focused and it had some neat action adventure elements such as finding pieces of golden Wario statues to increase your life. Much like finding pieces of heart in older Zelda games. Wario World unfortunately wasn't perfect and it always felt a little too short for a big 3D adventure, so I'd love for them to take it to the next level with a Wario World 2. Now let's move on to number 7, GB Robo. Chibi Robo started out as a 3D adventure game, and that's what it should be once again. The series was extremely charming as you played as a 10 centimeter tall robot exploring the normal world, trying to complete household tasks. I always felt that Chibi Robo perfectly encapsulated the Nintendo vibe, and I would have loved to see it get a chance on the Switch with its larger install base. Because the unfortunate truth is, Chibi Robo never sold very much, and the last game in the series, Chibi Robo Ziplash, which was a 2D platformer for the 3DS that released in 2015, was disappointing to fans and was such a flop that it seems like the series might be truly dead. Skip Limited, the developers of the franchise are closed down, and former devs of the studio are currently doing a spiritual successor called Co-Robo. So if Nintendo did ever bring back Chibi Robo, they'd have to do it themselves, and with its low sales, they probably won't prioritize it. But a man can dream. Now, let's move on to number 6, Star Fox. 
Now, Star Fox as a franchise is in a bit of a troubled place. It's obviously a very recognizable franchise with a ton of historical significance dating back to its early use of 3D graphics on the SNES, as well as debuting Rumble alongside Star Fox 64. There's a ton of nostalgia with this IP, but Nintendo hasn't been able to turn it into a big seller and many of its games have had mixed receptions. Because of that, I understand why Star Fox skipped the Switch. But personally, I think Star Fox still could come back and have a successful release on Switch 2. One hurdle they need to overcome is the fact that a more straightforward Star Fox 64 style game is probably too thin of an experience to be a full price game nowadays. But I think Assault on the GameCube was a good direction for the series and if improved upon and fleshed out could have been something. It had both traditional R-Wing combat but also on foot segments that I feel like got hated on at the time but had potential. I'd love to see Star Fox get a next gen entry on Switch 2 that has traditional on-rail segments but is able to incorporate other kinds of gameplay so they can make a bigger game that could have a chance at a full price game in this day and age. Or, you know, if they don't want to aim big, a smaller downloadable game that's short and cheap would be better than nothing. Now let's move on to number 5, Tomodachi Life. There are Tomodachi games pre-Tomodachi Life, but specifically I think they need to make another game in the vein of Tomodachi Life, and I'm shocked they haven't. If you don't know, Tomodachi Life became the 11th best-selling game on the 3DS, with over 6.7 million copies sold. When you think about the fact that the Switch has already has already come close to doubling the sales of the 3DS lifetime, and before it's done it definitely will, it's kind of shocking that they didn't make this one. Also, life sim games and cozy games in general have exploded on Switch with the massive success of Animal Crossing New Horizons. The big thing holding back Tomodachi Life is basically its reliance on Miis, which the Switch didn't focus on, but I don't see why that should matter. It's a part of the franchise's aesthetic and vibe at this point, so just have a good in-game character creator for Mii-like designs and allow for people to share and download their creations within Tomodachi 2. It's a part of the franchise's aesthetic and vibe at this point, so just have a good in-game character creator for Mii-like designs and allow for people to share and download their creations within Tomodachi Life 2. That's how Tomodachi Life blew up with people sharing all their crazy OCs as well as silly looking versions of celebrities. I feel like everyone had that late, had the late great Satoru Iwata and other Nintendo execs like Reggie fils in their game. Tomodachi Life occupied a unique space in the sim genre and its charm was off the charts. Managing these silly little characters and their relationships was hilarious and I feel like Nintendo will bring this one back. Also I gotta shout out the amazing Tomodachi Life Direct Nintendo made back in the early days of Nintendo Directs. People were so baffled by it, but as someone that was there, it's still one of the most memorable videos Nintendo's ever made. Now, let's move on to number 4, Kid Icarus. Kid Icarus is a franchise that dates all the way back to 1987 on the NES, where it started as a challenging platformer with some unique mechanics. But I'm specifically looking at Kid Icarus Reprising, a game that's part rail shooter, part just straight up third person shooter, as well as a really slick action game. It also prioritized its story in a big way, that isn't always common with Nintendo but it did in a very smart way as it didn't interrupt the gameplay to do so. The game was developed by Masahiro Sakurai's studio project Sora, which closed its doors after Kid Icarus Uprising shipped. But obviously Nintendo could continue the series if they really wanted to. I imagine Sakurai will be working on a new Smash for Switch 2, but I hope Nintendo has a desire to give this franchise another shot. It could really shine on next-gen Switch hardware, as it was one of the flashiest games Nintendo ever made, and it was on a weaker system like the 3DS. Now, let's move on to number 3, Golden Sun. Golden Sun is a JRPG franchise that debuted back in 2001 on the GBA, and its third and final game was Golden Sun Dark Dawn on the Nintendo DS, which released in 2010. I always found the series memorable because of how it combined action-adventure elements that were somewhat reminiscent of 2D Zelda games with a more traditional narrative-driven RPG. The series had many dungeons that required you to acquire specific items or spells to progress, giving it a very satisfying progression. We haven't really heard much regarding another Golden Sun in quite a while. In an interview with Nintendo Gamer in June 2012, Hiroyuki Takahashi spoke about the possibility of a fourth Golden Sun game. A big reason for us making RPGs comes from the requests from all the people who have enjoyed our RPGs in the past. Perhaps if there are enough Nintendo users asking for another game in the Golden Sun series, then this will naturally lead to the development of such a game. It was obviously over a decade ago, so I'm not holding my breath for the triumphant return of Golden Sun on Switch 2, but from the second to third Golden Sun games, the gap was eight years, so it's certainly not impossible. Now, let's move on to number two, Donkey Kong. Despite the massive sales of the Nintendo Switch, Nintendo has not really capitalized on expanding their Dong, er, Kong's audience. We've gotten an updated port of the Wii U classic Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, and that's about it. The only other game of Donkey Kong in the title is a remake of Mario vs. Donkey Kong, a spin-off puzzle game. Obviously, there are some reasons why Donkey Kong has been inactive during the Switch era, 
As we know, the developer of the most recent DKC games, Retro Studios, has been working on Metroid Prime 4 for a very long time. In a report from DK Vine and Did You Know Gaming, claimed that there was a 3D Donkey Kong game in development at Vicarious Visions, an Activision studio known for Skylanders. But unfortunately, after six months, Activision canceled it. And that's been that. So what would I like to see from DK? Well, number one would be a new attempt at a 3D Donkey Kong game. I feel like DK64 left Nintendo a bit gun-shy, but DK in 3D always made sense to me. Swinging from vines could be like Spider-Man swinging through New York, for instance. Donkey Kong 64's real issue was it went too far with collectibles, so it got repetitive. A more focused 3D platform with the creativity of 3D Mario games would be amazing, no doubt. That being said, I'd fully support a new 2D Donkey Kong as well. There have been a lot of rumors and speculation about Nintendo bringing back DK internally, while Retro is doing Metroid Prime. They could be doing their own take on a DK platformer. But it's hard to say if any of that's true and what form it could take. All I know is I want a new mainline Donkey Kong platformer on Switch 2. Two generations without an original new DK game would be unacceptable, and with Super Nintendo World getting an expanded Donkey Kong area soon, as well as his big role in the Super Mario Bros. movie, it feels like Nintendo won't be able to neglect Donkey Kong video games much longer. And now for my number one, Wave Race. Wave Race made a big splash on the N64 back in 1996, and it had a sequel, Wave Race Blue Storm, which was a launch title for the GameCube in 01, but it has been absent ever since. Wave Race was famous for its beautiful water and amazing physics, which were top-notch at the time. Racing games are historically great graphical showcases for new console hardware, and water always stands out in games. This is why I think it would be a great showcase for Switch 2. Shinya Takahashi led the development on Wave Race 64 back in the day, and he currently leads Switch's software development, so I'm sure the franchise has some love at Nintendo. In fact, we know it does. Back at the BAFTAs in 2018, Shinya Takahashi said, You may see that game again when asked about the possibility of a new Wave Race. We've been trying to make many games, and that may be one of them. I personally love Wave Race. So yeah, maybe there's some hope. But just like with other Nintendo racing franchises like F-Zero, I keep my expectations low because Mario Kart is such a juggernaut. I think everyone out there knows how huge Mario Kart rightfully is, with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe selling over 60 million units, and when you factor in the original Wii U game, it's over 70 million. I fully expect us to finally get a new Mario Kart during the very first year of the Switch 2's life, so Nintendo may not feel they have need for another racing game, but hopefully they are willing to explore that genre some more as they have a lot of great IPs to work with. Okay, now let's get some honorable mentions as well, as well as clarify some things. First off, as I just mentioned Mario Kart, I'd like to point out that obviously it should get a numbered spot on the list, as it qualifies as not getting a wholly original game on Switch, but it is a very obvious pick, and I fully expect that it will be revealed at the big Switch 2 presentation right off the bat. So I wanted to put some more long shots on the list, you know, for fun. Next up, I want to shout F-Zero, as I would have put it on the list, but F-Zero 99 is a unique new game. It's also pretty cool so I didn't want people to yell at me that it shouldn't count. The final franchise I'll mention is Earthbound, or Mother, as it's known in Japan. People have begged for a Mother 3 localized port for years, as well as for this franchise to continue in general. And as an RPG fan, I'd love to see it. But if we get the shocking announcement of Mother 3 finally coming west, that still wouldn't count as a new original ground-up game. So that's why the IP was left off. So yeah, there's my list of franchises that I want to see get a new entry on Switch 2 after they unfortunately didn't receive one on the original Switch. What games would you like to see make their grand return on Switch 2? Feel free to let me know in the comments down below. And if you'd like more videos like this, please consider liking the video. And if you want to share in the anticipation for the Switch 2 with a fellow Nintendo fan, then please subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.